a happy new year to everyone. We have some good news this morning. Uh, we received notice that we will receive individualized assistance to the victims of the flooding uh, up north. We're very excited about that. We know people have gone through very difficult weeks and we're appreciative of uh, the administration, the president uh, honoring our request for individualized assistance. And uh, we're gonna do everything we can. People work, work in pulling together in Whatcom County and, and, and Skagit, we appreciated that. And, uh, and the Lummi, Macaws, uh, this is yet another effort to show how we can help people uh, through the multiple crises we have. Uh, second issue, I want to say thank you to all of the people who are working so hard right now for the multiple challenges we have. We have weather, we got snowplow drivers who are working like crazy, uh, we got law enforcement personnel who are responding to fender benders all over our state. We want to thank them and their families for working so hard. I want to thank the healthcare providers that are working overtime now with the uh, emerging COVID increase in hospitalizations we have. Very appreciative of their efforts. Uh, grocery store workers, a lot of people working hard right now, and, and I appreciate it, and, and I think Washingtonians do as well. So turning to the upcoming legislative session, I'm very excited about this. I'm very optimistic about it. It's a short session, but I believe it can be an extraordinary session. And the reason is we have extraordinary challenges of multiple crises in our state. And I believe we have the capability of responding to them with the boldness and action oriented agenda that I think is necessary for our state. And so I'm gonna be asking legislators to work real hard with diligence and speed to respond to these multiple challenges we have. I wanna address when I think one of the largest challenges that we have uh, as a community today and that is the threat to democracy that we are experiencing. It's January 6th. It is the anniversary of an attack on democracy itself in the US Capitol. Uh, I experienced that when I was in my residence and people uh, attacked the governor's residence. I had to go to a safe room because of them coming onto our premises illegally. Uh, and I feel very uh, uh, deep in my heart what it meant when the, when the temple of democracy was attacked in Washington, uh, D.C. But this is much more than a simple case of some violence. It is, it is our democracy itself that was attacked and continues to be attacked, unfortunately. And I, heart, I know we all hearken back to what Benjamin Franklin said when he walked out of that hall. Um, uh, you know, he was asked, what is it, a monarchy or a republic? And he said, it's a republic if you can keep it. And that is in question today, whether we can keep our republic and our, de our democracy, because it was attacked on January 6th in Washington, D.C., and it is still being attacked today, unfortunately, by a defeated president. And I think it's very important for us to focus on the depth and the continuing nature of this ongoing insurgency and the continuing coup that is still going on in our country and in our state. So to respond to that, in part, um, I've issued an order commemorating and honoring the law enforcement officers in Washington, D.C., some of whom who lost their lives, uh, our National Guard here, our state troopers who've protected us, to honor their efforts and their losses of life uh, in the protection of democracy. But I think we need to do much more than to commemorate this day of infamy. I think we need to realize that this is a continuing effort to continue the big lie, to cast doubt on the workings, the fundamental workings of our democracy. And we have to realize, I think, uh, that that is a threat that just sort of passed on December or January 6th, somehow that we would just make this something that was a day of in history, it is a present day. The threat to our democracy is just as dangerous on January 6, 2022, as it, uh, uh, as it was uh, a year ago. And, and so we simply have to realize the nature of this challenge. The, the defeated president just in the last hour said, never give up. He is still intent on continuing this coup effort. And we have to realize, unfortunately, it is not just in other states. It is right here in Washington state, this ongoing effort. 
It is most disturbing to me that we had three Republican legislators who went to a, a, an organizing effort to continue that insurgency and to continue to sow doubt on our electoral process. This is a cancer on, in our society. And I believe we all need to, both parties, respond to it, to speak not just against the violence on January 6 a year ago, but against this continuing big lie that the defeated president and his allies, including three legislators or more in our state legislature, that are continuing this effort. And the reason is, is that if, if that takes a continued route, if people do believe this election was, was somehow stolen, we're gonna to continue to have this threat. So I am calling on all leaders, including Republicans and Democrats to speak forcefully against this and not allow it to take root. We have to realize we were one vice president, one secretary of state in Georgia from a successful coup attempt. And that will happen again if we allow it. So I think we need to speak against this, but we need to do more than speak. It should not be legal in the state of Washington for elected officials, candidates for office, to willfully lie about these election results. And unfortunately, they are doing that. This needs to be made illegal. Accordingly, I will uh, support legislation this year to make it a, a misdemeanor, a gross misdemeanor, to in fact lie about these election results without, without any basis. And unfortunately, we have seen that behavior in our state. Even today, we continue to see people lie about the election results without any basis to do so. And the reason I know that is that cases have been dismissed where people have made allegations of that regard. The courts have looked at that and found them baseless, without merit, without substance. They've concluded they were lies. That needs to be illegal in our state. So I will be supporting legislation to make that strong statement in favor of democracy. Now, you may note that I'm a bit passionate about this subject. And the reason is, is that we have a lot of things we need to work on together. Homelessness, poverty, uh, crime, climate change. These are all things we need to work on together. But our ability to do so is jeopardized and threatened by this basic threat to democracy itself. And unfortunately, it is a continuing coup attempt that's happening today. And we need to stand up against it today and in the days to come. So I'm hopeful that more elected leaders will call out the defeated president's effort to confront him on this, to not allow their colleagues to be allied with him without forceful denunciation. Republican leaders need to denounce these three legislators from Washington who were part of this conspiracy. And they need to do so forcibly. And they need to do that today. And then we need to work together to try to increase uh, confidence in these systems. Now, we had a Republican Secretary of State who did do that. I want to honor her effort in this regard. She needs to be joined uh, uh, much more uh, in this effort. So that's the most fundamental issue, I believe, today that we need to stand up for. And again, I want to thank the heroic officers who protected democracy in my life when I was in Congress. Thank you for their heroism. Let me turn to some of the efforts briefly that we need to work on. I'm very excited about our effort to, uh, uh, to move forward on homelessness. Uh, we have made a, a bold proposal to address homelessness, both financially and in a, in a substantive way to make sure that our investments work. Um, and uh, we have proposed $815 million to address the affordable housing crisis but I want to note that one of the strengths and attributes of our proposal, I believe, is it's not just roofs, because we need more than roofs. We need the supportive services to help people break out of chronic homelessness. We need the mental health support systems, the vocational training, the chemical uh, addiction support to help them break out of this. And so I would commend these proposed to, to the legislature. I know that there is, this is a problem across the state of Washington. And I hope that we will succeed uh, taking a big bite out of homelessness this session. Uh, I am pleased that the legislators apparently have found a way to make refinements to the long-term care bill and to put on pause 
collection of, of revenues associated with that. There appears to be broad agreement about that. I would encourage them to act early in the session as early as possible, which will help reduce some of the confusion about the existing statute that does require at the moment uh, uh, withholding of these wages. So I think if the legislatures can do that as soon as possible, it'll really, really help everyone. And I believe they will be successful in, in doing that. Uh, we are excited about our efforts against poverty. We know we have a long-term poverty issue, which is a chronic problem in our society based on inequities. And we've put uh, $248 million in a host of issues that will help break the cycle of poverty, which we know reduces opportunity, is somewhat uh, a reason for a crime and, uh, and choking off the possibilities of our youth. And I commend those proposals. Uh, we are uh, continuing to work against the climate crisis. And the climate crisis is not an abstraction. It is something that I and every governor in the United States almost on a weekly basis have to deal with a climate crisis. I did so when I went and saw the town of Malden that would burn down in forest fires. I did that when I went uh, to, uh, to Nespelum and saw, talked to the Colvilles who've lost hundreds, hundreds of thousands of acres of commercial timber because of the fires. I did it when I went to Metau and talked to the parents whose children couldn't go outside quite a number of days last summer because of the smoke from the fires. This is a health issue. It's an asthma issue for our children. In fact, the Metau is the place with the most dangerous air in the world uh, a day or two last year. In the world, it was right here in the Evergreen State. And most recently, it was in the Nooksack. We can't just do the things that I'm glad we're doing, which is to help the individualized assistance that we now have won. We, can, we, have, to choke, we have to confront this peril at its source, which is carbon pollution. And accordingly, I've proposed that we invest $626 million and continue our efforts by accelerating some of the things we're doing to give Washingtonians access to clean electricity, to clean cars, and to have some of the, the rules in place to prevent uh, increased use of, of dangerous uh, energy sources. We also propose $187 million for our salmon and some efforts to help our iconic species, iconic species upon which Orca and we rely. I commend those to the legislature. I'm very pleased that we are now have almost all of our schools open today, except for the snow. Uh, even in the face of the COVID effort. And I wanna commend the educators who've done such a great job working through the COVID uh, crisis. And they have developed protocols to allow us to keep our schools open. And I'm pleased we're starting off on that foot. Uh, we have, in, for one of the reasons we have proposed an additional $900 million for our schools is to enable them to make sure that they can have uh, the tools they need to stay open. And we are committed to that. I, it should be our expectation, I believe, to keep our schools open. And I want to thank everybody working so hard on this. As you know, we've made 800,000 uh, 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 test kits. We've reserved. We, if we need additional test kits in our schools, we're making additional masks available to our schools. And I know everybody wants to keep both our kids in school and as safe as humanly possible. So I'm glad we're making progress on that. Uh, I'm looking forward to some uh, uh, improvements in our laws involving criminal justice. Uh, I believe we will be successful refining some of the police accountability laws. We now have had some experience with them, and we found uh, at least a couple things that I believe will be successful improving uh, on the probable cause issues when we can actually have, uh, have officers intervene, and also particularly on those who are dealing with mental health crises. And I'm encouraged by what I'm hearing and talking to legislators about our ability to, uh, uh, to move forward uh, on that. Uh, we also, uh, importantly, I think there's one item I hope legislators will approve, and that is increases in the number of officers that we can uh, have on the, the street safely trained by increasing the criminal justice training budget. So we can increase by 43% the number of officers that can get training we need officers on the street. We need them properly trained. I hope legislators will uh, adopt that budget proposal so that we can have uh, well-trained, uh, appropriately funded uh, uh, officers as part of our uh, criminal justice uh, effort. Transportation, I've proposed a, a large supplemental budget of a billion dollars in resources for our transportation budget. I'm encouraged by that. 
I'm encouraged from what I'm hearing, uh, hearing from uh, uh, leadership that they want to, as part of that, make that a green transportation budget, including a clean fuel standard and making investments um, in some of the electrification efforts of our transportation system so that it will be greener as well. I do want to note that I'm very open to legislators' uh, more ambitious uh, efforts. If uh, they have some ideas to have an even a larger transportation budget that would allow more capital projects to be initiated, I encourage that. I'm open to those ideas. Certainly, we know we need a bridge across the Columbia River on I-5, and I'm encouraging them to continue their work on, on that. I know that they are have continuing discussions uh, in that regard. So there's a quick rundown of some of the exciting things that I think we can tackle in the short session. And I'm pleased legislators have found a way to, to operate successfully during the COVID uh, pandemic, and I'm going to look forward to success again.